Well, man, I just want to echo what Pastor Ashley was saying earlier. I'm so glad that you guys are here, but I've had an incredible time just celebrating Christmas. I've had, I, it's just been an awesome time at my house, and uh, in, in, in saying that, you know, people say that family are a lot like fish. After two or three days, you need to go ahead and throw them out of your house. Uh, I am so thankful that I have the opposite of that. I, I love having my family here, and, and this week we've got the McGee's at our house right now. Michael's here uh, tonight with us, and I'm just so glad uh, that they are here and their family's down. I just love spending time with them, and so Mike, I'm glad that, you, that y'all are here with us this, this evening. Um, uh, with, that, with that being said, though, uh, the end of the year, or the end of a year, is always an interesting time. Um, obviously, Christmas time is really, really fun. But once you get past Christmas, we're kind of in that stage of it's like, we're on like this teeter-totter. And we're at a place where we're looking ahead to the new year, but also at the same time, we're realizing, oh, this year's over. And it's a great time to look backwards as well as, as to what we had. So I just felt led by the Holy Spirit, especially after what Mel talked about last week with, with seasons. And, and if, you, if you missed that, I really encourage you to go back and listen because it just was really, really uh, incredible how the Holy Spirit was just working that all in her as he was leading me into what I want to talk about. Because the importance, again, of recognizing how we leave one season is often how we enter the next one. And, and Melanie touched on that last week. Um, but from that, though, from, from what Melanie spoke on, I believe that it's important that we have the right thoughts about not only what we've come through and what we've discussed this year in the Word and how we're able to apply it to our lives, but also looking ahead into what's coming based on that. So that's why what I want to talk about tonight and what I want us to have in our hearts, especially not, not just now at the end of the year, we need to be doing this all the time, but as, especially as we're leaving 2022, I want to talk about having the right perspective the right perspective. And, and, and the reason why I want to focus on the, the right perspective is because perspective is so important. See, our perspectives or our perspective of who God is determines our relationship with him. Our perspective of God's word determines what it can do in our life. Therefore, our perspective of who God is and his word together determines the trajectory of our lives. So the reason why tonight, especially, that I want to focus on having the right perspective is because it's paramount to the success of you and I's relationship, not only with the Lord, but us bringing the kingdom here on this earth. Perspective is huge. So tonight, as we discuss the right perspective, I want to make something very clear. Contrary to popular belief, not every perspective needs to be taken into consideration. See, in actuality, some opinions or perceptions or perspectives should actually never, ever be able to see the light of day. See, it's not just about having a perspective or having an opinion or having a point of view. Just having one alone isn't enough to determine your success. It's having the right perspective that matters. In order for us to have the right perspective, we've got to make sure we understand the definition of perspective. And I want to make sure I clarify this. A perspective as defined by the dictionary, i.e. the internet, it says perspective is a particular attitude toward or a way of regarding something or point of view. And the reason why I wanted to discuss this tonight is because learning how to keep the right perspective now gives you perfect placement with the Lord tomorrow. See, having the right perspective now provides you the area to have the perfect placement with the Lord tomorrow. It all is determined based on our perspective. See, without a heavenly perspective, we lose the ability to get the heavenly results that we're looking for in our everyday life. Without the right perspective, we lose the power that God can play when things don't go our way. However, the right perspective keeps us moving forward. See, without the right perspective, we lose the hunger and the drive whenever we have just come into glory, whenever we just experience success. We go, oh, that's great, that's awesome. Here, let me sit back here. 
But see, the right perspective keeps us in check and keeps us hungry for righteousness. Keeping the right perspective in mind, we have to address that God is trying to speak to us for a reason at all times. And see, without vision from this year, we won't see next year's vision as a definite leading of God without the right perspective. But beyond just, well, this year's vision was really cool, seeking first the kingdom of God. How cool was that? That was really cool. And all the things we did were so cool. And everything so cool that we do here at this church is so cool. Without the right perspective, we just leave seeking first the kingdom of God right here in 2022. And we just move right on to the next thing. And we miss what God is trying to do because we're not looking at it from the right perspective. See, what he's trying to do is he's trying to quicken his church. He's trying to equip his saints. He's trying to prepare you. He's trying to prepare me. He's trying to build us up. He's trying to motivate us. He's trying to draw us near. He's trying to prune us. He's trying to teach us. He's trying to show us how to live, how to prosper. He's trying to remind us that you're a son. You're a daughter of the Most High King. And beyond just the relational side of things, there's a true practical reason why he's teaching us these things. God is trying to prepare us for something. And we all understand this. We can see this. We can see this happening now from our collective perspective. Things that are coming up in the world. Things that are shaping up in the world. We can tell them the signs and the tremblings and the groanings in the earth. That there are things coming that God's trying to prepare us for. And it's going to take people seeking first the kingdom of God to be able to handle those things that are coming. But we also are going to have to understand that it's the right perspective outside of what the world's perspective is or the world's scope of thinking that we have to take into consideration only. And that is the right perspective. It's heaven's perspective. It's God's perspective. It's the spiritual perspective. See, our five senses will always try to give us a perspective on what's going on around us in the world, and that's great. But if we only ever rely on the perspective that we can get from our five tangible senses, we'll miss out on what God's trying to show us. See, God's trying to get us to another place. And to get to the next place, it requires a separate point of view. That's the perspective that God wants us to have. We have to then understand in that, though, that not all perspectives are created equal. We have to tie that back in at all times. And while everyone, again, is going to have one, they're not all going to lead us to equal conclusions. Isaiah 5.20 says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You will have people with conviction, telling you that what's wrong is right and that what's right is wrong. What are we going to do when we're presented with that without the right perspective? They will believe with everything within them that wrong is right and that right is wrong. We have to have the right perspective in order to handle that. That's why we need to be submitted to the word of God. We have to be submitted to the Spirit of God. We have to be submitted to the authority of God in order for us to have our perspectives set by him. Genesis 1.1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If we can't get beyond in the beginning God, we're never going to be able to get anyplace else with our perspective. And if we do truly accept that in the beginning, God, then what we're saying is, okay, if Genesis 1-1 is correct, then I'm submitting to everything else that follows after Genesis 1-1. And in order for us to have a true right perspective, we have to then submit to what the word says after Genesis 1-1. Without submitting to God, we will never get the perspective he has. And without the perspective of God, we'll never get the big picture that he has. Well, you don't ever get to the big picture without submission to the authority that Christ has. And that's what the world is missing. There's no submission. See, ever since the beginning, there's been opinions and flavors and different styles 
and this is what I say, and I follow the teaching of this person, and then and, in gray areas, and what do we do with this, and the color of the carpet ought to be this, and you should never have chairs, you should always have pews in church, and blah, 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 blah. The only thing that we should be pursuing is the right perspective. And without the right perspective, we'll truly under, we will struggle with true understanding. True understanding is not just having the right answer. True understanding is coming when you understand the process. When you understand what's going on. It's getting a view of the correct perspective so that we can get the right picture. And that all happens through God's perspective. Have I said that enough? We get that? We got that? All right, good. Before we dive into really what I, the main meat of what I want to talk about, I want to give you one situation that has three perspectives. But there's only one that's right. So here's a scenario, if you're reading your Bible. Jesus is sitting down with whatever group he wasn't supposed to sit down with. One situation, three different perspectives. The first perspective is that of the Pharisee. I see Jesus sitting with, 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 the, with the sinner or sitting with whatever group it is. My perspective is Jesus sits with the sinner because he is one. That's one perspective. The second perspective is that of the sinner. And the sinner that's non repentive The sinner says, Jesus sits with me in my perspective because he accepts what I do. Okay, there's a separate perspective. And the third perspective is, is the perspective of Jesus himself. And Jesus says, I sit with the sinner because I love him and because I want him to change. But I want him to get my perspective on how I think about him. See, regardless of our approach to him, Regardless of our perspective of him, God has his own perspective. And whether or not you choose to see God through his perspective, it doesn't change his intent behind what he did. God is self-evident. We don't define God. God's perspective is God's perspective. We don't get to define that. Now, we look in the word, we let the Holy Spirit reveal to us what it is, we, we let that happen, then we come to our conclusions based off of what we say we're submitted to in the word, but that perspective is God's perspective. We didn't, we didn't make that happen. Y'all you'll, you'll, you'll following me? See, he came to teach us how to be a part of the kingdom. He came to prepare us for a relationship with him and to give us a way to experience the Holy Spirit. So the quicker that we can come to the understanding that we need to have God's perspective, it's going to be for our better. The sooner that we can see what he's trying to do in our lives, the quicker we'll get to spiritual growth and maturity. The quicker we'll walk by the Spirit. Romans 8.8 8 says, those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So the sooner that we can get out of walking from the perspective of the flesh the better for us. The word says in John 4, verses 23 and 24, he says, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. God's calling us to something. He's calling us to see things from his perspective. And that spirit, what it does for us is it allows us to walk in authority. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and of self-discipline. So the quicker that we can get to God's perspective, the sooner we can walk in less fear and start walking in power, love, and self-discipline. All the things that's going to require for us to truly worship God. Power, love, and self-discipline. That, that's the spirit that God's talking about. It's not just dancing around. It's not just speaking in tongues. It's a practical application of power, love, and self-discipline that God's trying to get us to. Well, in order for us to get to that, we've got to get to his perspective. So tonight, we have to have God's perspective, the right perspective. So then, what are the things then that keep us out of God's perspective? What are the things that change our perspectives? What are things that keep us from having the right perspective? Well, I'm glad you asked, because that's what we're going to talk about. All right? Tonight, what I want to discuss, I want to talk about the four things that keep us from having the right perspective. 
and, and the importance about having the right perspective, obviously, like I said, at the, begin, at the end of a year, getting ready to start a new year, okay, we're all going to, oh, our, our New Year's resolutions, and what do I want to change for next year, and what do, we, what do I want to do differently, or what, what Bible study am I going to read 50 chapters a day in and then quit in January? We have to keep the right perspective. Okay, we have, to, we have to have our goals with the right perspective. We have to look at our successes with the right perspective. Where do we get it right? And we have to look at our failures with the right perspective. See, without having the right perspective, we'll just go into this big lull of, well, just another day. But that's not what God's calling us to do. God's trying to quicken us. He's trying to teach us. He's trying to draw us deeper. He's trying all these things. It, we have to have the right perspective. Okay, I know y'all are chomping at the bit on the edge of your seat. So here we go. The first thing that will keep you from experiencing the right perspective, a.k.a. God's perspective, is, write this down, retrospective living. Retrospective living. You can put a little hyphen out to the side of that. And two things come to mind, two kinds of retrospective living that people get caught up in that keep them from missing God's perspective. Regret is one of them. And the other one, I'm, I'm just, this is a, this is a Chapmanism, so hang with me. The good old days. Pining for the good old days. Pining for the good old days. Here, here's a verse I want to give to you for, with, for this point. Proverbs 21.5 says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. The plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to, 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 to poverty. Planning means I'm thinking ahead. I'm being proactive. But when we allow time to only be the great revealer of what kind of perspective we had, what it does is it keeps us limited from seeing the right perspective. See, time is great. It reveals what we've sown. We get to harvest what we've planted. We get to get what we've been putting in. And time is great. But time happens, and then we get to be revealed on the end of it. See, whenever we're looking backwards, and we're looking back in time wondering if we made the right decisions, or if we had the right perspective on the front end, and we're constantly making time or regret or pining for the, how things used to be, we're missing what's in front of us. When all of our thoughts and all of our efforts are about what is behind us, we're missing what God has in front of us. See, it's like, Hannah was explaining this to me, it's like, and I, I didn't realize this was like a psychological thing. This is a psychological thing, so bear with me because you all know I'm real, psycho, I almost said psychedelic, I'm not psychedelic. My shirt's kind of psychedelic, but whatever. It's like, the windshield and the rear view mirror. Both of those are in your vehicle, unless, well, I'm not even gonna get into all that. We're just getting on the rabbit trails, okay? Windshield and a rear view mirror, you need both of them. But if you're driving and the majority of your time is spent looking in the rear view mirror, that's a dangerous way to drive a vehicle. If all you're doing is looking at what's behind you, you're missing the, the part that the, the bigger part is what's in front of you. That's what retrospective living is like. You're, you're letting regret, you're letting what happened behind you limit what God's trying to do in you right now. That's why you have to keep things in the right perspective. Yes, that happened. You're right. You messed up royally. You missed it. You're right, what you are thinking or whatever terrible thing that you did or whatever, whatever that is, I'm not trying to make light of it, it happened. But God's saying, hey, look what's in front of you now. The best way to gauge at your progress is not continue to look behind you, it's let's look in front. What's in front of us? And if the greatest things that have ever happened to you have only ever happened to you in the past, you're missing out on what God... Oh, I sure remember whenever bread was a nickel. Okay, I get that. That'd be cool. I remember things used to be so cheap. I remember. I me you remember that? Oh, I remember that. You remember whenever the movies used to be so good? I remember that. 
Okay, you're missing out on what God's trying to show you that's in front of you. You're missing the bigger picture, and that's what's in front. Your rearview mirror is this big. Your windshield is a lot bigger because you're supposed to be able to see what's in front of you. It's more important. We have to get out of retrospective thinking. We have to make sure that we're having the right perspective, and that's what allows us to continue to go forward. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing that keeps you from having the right perspective. The second thing that keeps you from having the right perspective is a lack of focus or choices, as I would say. Too many choices. You've got, you, you can't get focused. Matthew 6, verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. Have you ever tried to take a picture, get a clear picture while your camera's moving? I, I, I love taking pictures at Christmas. It's my favorite thing. Right, Hannah? It's our favorite thing to do. I love it. What's so frustrating, though, about having to take a picture, besides just the fact that you have to take a picture, is getting everyone to stand still. Or getting whoever's taking the picture to stand still. Because you can't, you keep getting these blurry pictures. Oh, that one's blurry. We got to go back. Oh, that one's blurry. Hey, oh, that one's blurry. We can't, we can't get a good picture because we can't get the focus right. The reason why we're missing the right picture and, have, and missing the right perspective is because we can't get our focus focused in on one thing. One of the reasons why I love this church is because we are intensely focused on what God has called us to do here at this church. That's guarded by our pastor, and it trickles down into everything else that's going on here. We are focused on what we're doing here. It's not putting down anything else or any other church that's going on around us. Praise the Lord for different ministries that do different things. But here, we're going to be focused on what we're getting because we want to have the right perspective on what God's called this church to do and to be. Let's take it off of the church as the, as the group of people and put it on yourself, the church. You have to focus your focus in on what God's called you to do. Instead of having so many other different things going on. Listen, your choices, it's not like it's like, oh, well, go be a murderer or, or, or go to church. Oh, man, which choice am I going to pick? Oh, it's so tempting. The, the choices are, a lot of times, what get people out of focus are good things. Because we've got a lot of good-hearted, good-intentioned people that, that, that want to do things and that want to build things and want to create things and want to see people be blessed and want to... But you just can't get the focus right. We've got to, in order to be successful, we've got to have the right perspective and that requires us to be focused. It, it's kind of like being on a ride. You know what they tell you to do? Keep all your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. See, what happens if you stick your arm out? Oh, as you're flying by something else, you stick your arm out and you try to grab onto something, you're, it's going to hurt. You're going to be seriously hurt or injured or worse. That's what it's like when you're trying to live, okay, I'm trying to focus in on something, but oh, hey, there's that thing. Or, oh, hey, what about that opportunity? And then before long, you've split what God would have you be solely focused on. You divide yourself. You divide your own house. I know I'm speaking to a lot of people on a lot of different things because this is applicable in a lot of different areas, but you, you take that for what it is. Focus will keep, lack of focus will keep you from having the right perspective. The third thing that will keep you from having the right perspective are thoughts founded in emotion. Okay, thoughts, or sorry, thoughts grounded in emotion. Okay, 2 Corinthians, the verse I got for this one, 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. I want to say the perspective of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. See, the emotionally grounded perspective is very dangerous because emotions change from one week to the next. Boy, this week I'm really, I'm really excited. So then next week... If I'm not excited, well, man, the spirit must have just left. We're not even talking about letting our emotions like anger or jealousy or rage or 
we're not even talking about those kinds of emotions. See, being led by your emotions will lead you in, into a place that you don't want to be. And, and what it requires is you have to change your thoughts. You have to get the, pers- the right perspective of how to think correctly. See, just being shown the answer won't work because you think, with all your emotion, with all your zeal, with all your whatever, that this is the right decision, and because you can't see this now, now I'm going to get really upset, and then you start, people start going like this. That's emotion. Okay, you've got to be able to take emotion out of it. If you can't take emotion out of your decision, I'm not saying you can't be passionate about, about doing things the right way, or we have calls to excellence and all those things, but what I'm saying is emotional led, emotionally led and grounded thoughts that lead into choices. Whenever I'm teaching math, and you just bear with me, because I know some of you are like, so the kid, I saw all the kids go, okay? Whenever I'm teaching math, and a kid gets a, gets a question wrong, my goal is to not just say, hey, that's not just, that's the wrong answer, here's the right answer. What I try to do in that moment is give them the perspective of why they got the answer wrong. I try to show them, I try to show them the system and where they missed it at. And see if 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 they if I can get them to understand the system, if I can give them a bigger perspective, it takes their emotion out of, oh well I'm an idiot or oh I I hate math or it's because I'm not good at math that this is happening or I, I, I take the doom and gloom out of it and just show them, no hey listen. You just weren't following the directions right. I gave you half credit for that because had that been the, 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 the question that it was asking, you got, you got the answer right. So I can give you half credit for that. It's the people that don't only just do the question wrong, they follow the directions wrong, they got the answer. Those are the ones they got to work a little bit harder at. That's how we have to be with the word whenever our emotion starts getting involved in our decisions. We have to get the right perspective. And see, if we don't, what happens is we end up doing something that we're going to end up regretting. So that's, that, that's the third thing. And the last thing, the last thing that keeps us from being able to see the right perspective are blockades. Things that block our perspective. Things that get in the way of our perspective. The scripture I have for this is Ephesians 4, 17 through 19. And it says, so I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. In the futility of their thinking, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they are given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. The people who are partially blocked, so people who just have a part of the vision, they're the most dangerous. Because they think that just because they have a little bit of light, I know exactly what's going on. I have, everybody here would laugh at me if if, if you guys saw me and said, and and I said, I can see everybody in this whole room. I can see everyone, especially as I'm standing here, only looking at this one side of the room, I see everything perfectly. Everyone in here from the outside with a different perspective, everyone over here is going, well, I'm all the way over here. Well, here's the deal. This is my perspective. This is how I see things. This is how I see things. And I've convinced myself People who live with, with, with blockades, they've convinced themselves that this is how everyone sees. You'll hear about people that, that get a LASIK surgery, they get a contact, or they'll get something done with their eyes, and they'll go, I, I didn't even know that that's what that looked like. I didn't even know that that had that kind of a color. I didn't even know that that was how that could look. Wow, my vision was that bad. That's how it is with people that live in the world. That's what we do whenever we make choices and we do things that block the perspective. Sometimes we block the perspective because we don't like what the word says to us. And this is is the religion that I want to see God in, this little box. 
It's like a red pill, blue pill moment in the matrix. I don't really want to see what's going on around me. I'm completely comfortable with living my life with the limited vision that I can see. I don't, I don't think that any of us should strive for that. How, how silly is it of us to, to live like that whenever there's so much more available to us? We can remove the things that are in our way if we'll just get the right perspective, if we'll allow God to show us. So in closing, our theme this year was seeking first the kingdom of God. And again, like I said at the beginning, I don't want that to ever leave us. I don't think it should ever leave us. Seeking first the kingdom of God doesn't change in 2023. But the main thing that you need to know tonight, as you're looking back in your rearview mirror, and then preparing yourself to look forward, if you find yourself going, as I consider the word, and how it has been challenged to me this year, how God has come to me and revealed things to me, I've applied it, and I feel like I've been experiencing victory. Praise God. Keep the right perspective. If you've just gone from glory, and you're in a season right now of glory, and praise God, hallelujah, you, every, every song that Melanie's got us up here, you're bumping to, and everything that Teresa's strumming, you're like, yeah, praise God. Keep the right perspective. Keep the right perspective. Okay, I'm not trying to preach doom and gloom, but I'm just saying keep the right perspective. Stay hungry for righteousness. Because it's the hungry that are, that are hungry for righteousness that will be filled. And if tonight you found yourself going, man, January 1st is coming around, and here's what I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to change this, and God is convicted me of this, and I'm going to do this, and I'm, gonna, and I'm repenting of this, and I'm bringing this. And, man, everything this whole year was terrible, but, but next year it's gonna, I'm going to do everything differently. Here's what you need to know. Praise God. Take the conviction, not condemnation. Conviction is a pathway to go forward. Condemnation will keep you stuck. Praise God. But keep the right perspective. Don't lock yourself up in your own little torture chamber. Well, I could never, I could never be anything. I could never achieve anything. God doesn't ever want. There were some terrible things that happened to me this year, and that, that means God doesn't love me. Keep the right perspective. Keep the right perspective. Remember what his perspective is of you. He came for you. He came for all of us. He came for all of us in our worst moment. Reject anything else that keeps you from having the right perspective. Understand that the path we choose is based on the perspectives that we have. And the perspectives that we have will either put us in a better position or will hold us back. Let's capture our thoughts. Let's cast off any sin. And with fear and trembling, let's seek to know things through God's eyes. That's all I've got for you guys tonight. Y'all stand with me.